Next on the Broadway show, he's bad, he knows it. I'm hanging out with Broadway's newest thriller, the star of MJ the Musical. We're celebrating another huge opening night on Broadway. Plus, the stars of the new Broadway revival of Spamalot. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is the Broadway show. If you're looking for the inside scoop on Broadway's biggest shows, you have come to the right place. It is the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Welcome. Let's kick things off with another huge opening night and a Book of Mormon reunion. Josh Gad and Andrew Rannells are back on Broadway together in the new comedy, Gutenberg. We were there opening night and hit the carpet. It's been a lot of work but very, very uh, fulfilling and very exciting. And we, you know, we were a little, I don't wanna say we were nervous because we knew- I wanna say we were nervous. We were nervous. We were nervous. I, I mean, we've been rehearsing sort of more or less with a very small group of people in a rehearsal room. We had room. a three week rehearsal period spread and out by like a month. We didn't know if it was funny anymore. No, yeah. or we were funny anymore. So it's been nice to get to do it in front of an audience and hear people laughing. In the three weeks of previews, the uh, effusive love that people seem to have for the show repeat uh, visits to the theater, people telling friends and loved ones about it. And, and that kind of buzz is, it's organic. It, it's built out of a trust with an audience and, and the audience seems to be rewarding us for the work we're doing. And that's the greatest thing you could ask for. I think the big challenge is the challenge of the show, which is these two guys are trying to represent this Les Mis style, big budget production, but all they've got is themselves and a bunch of hats. And so, to think imaginatively about that and how do you depict the turntable, how do you pick flying when you don't have any of those actual things, that's been the, the challenge but also the fun. They're both brilliant separately, but then them together, it just brings out such a just unbelievable uh, experience for all of us to enjoy. So um, yeah, I think we're gonna have I the think same it's thing. like our connection. I think we bring out the better of each other. Oh my God! Wow, that's the nicest thing. Wow, I love you. I love you. I love you. God, God, this show is fantastic. Gutenberg is a hilarious two-man, twenty-character story of two best pals, Bud and Doug, who work to mount a Broadway show. On opening night, a famous Broadway producer made that dream come true. I, I don't know if you can tell by my hat, but I'm a famous Broadway producer. Yeah. Perhaps you've heard of me, the name is Bialystok, Max Bialystok. Yes. Your dreams are gonna come true. Thank you. Thank you. You've got your show, congratulations. Oh. I'll see you all at Sardis. Elijah Ray Johnson is Broadway's newest king of pop now on Broadway, starring in MJ the Musical. We had a chance to talk. You walk in, you see your name on the on the marquee. What is what is that? Feel? I mean, a lot of people don't Crazy. have that opportunity. What does that feel like? It's insane. It's insane. It's, it's like a, it's a it's a it's a dream. You know, uh, yeah. when I was little, uh, Michael was the reason why I started performing, and so to be able to play him on Broadway, and it's like you know bigger than anything I could have ever imagined uh, growing up. And even like the 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 poster of me on the door, like it's just it's surreal. Like it's insane to be here on Broadway doing this. It's like, yeah, it's a dream. So is this the door you enter every day? Yes, it's the stage door. <laughs> My face right here is, is beautiful. So you know where you're going? Yeah, yeah. It's just, just, it's actually just for me, just to make sure that I know, to like, oh, right, this, this is what I'm doing and everything. Great. So, you know, what it's all that for me. What does that feel like? It's insane. It's insane. It's also very funny, too, because the makeup and the hair and the wig and everything, yeah. when I come out, people kind of don't recognize me. So oh they're like, God. are you Michael? And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's me. That's me doing the thing. You grew up kind of just surrounded by his music, like surrounded by everything Michael. Talk a little bit about where that all began for you. I think it was yeah, around your the dad time. responsible. Yeah, yeah. I think my dad just kind of introduced me. I was around the time when Chris Brown came out, and I just saw him, him dancing and singing, and I was like amazed. And then my dad kind of gave me an education just of all the, the the greats. But Michael was the one I gravitated to the most. And yeah, just kind of I would perform around Detroit at different talent shows doing Jackson Five songs. That's why we do wow. I have the little fedora on. That's how I got my start. Yeah, but it kind of just captivated me. I, I really was inspired by his movement, his intention all the things that, you know, why we love Michael. And it really just, I mean, it's, yeah, the reason why I started doing what I do now. How do you get into his mindset every night before you hit the stage? Is it the music? Is it the, do you have to really sit into the mindset or is it easy to do? 
Uh, I think the more you do it, the easier it gets, but it's always still like refocusing and just making sure that like, I think I'm talking about like magic, like making sure that like that's the forefront of the performance of the intention and all that, because that's how he was and make sure that every night you give it your all because Michael uh, gave it his all every time he performed. Does it shift every, I don't know, every few weeks or something, the area of the show that you like the best or the, the song that you uh, feel most into where you feel like your magic is coming through? It feels like it's a boring answer, but it's not. I mean, my no, favorite it's is, is it's Beat It. Because it's the first thing that I do, I step on stage and I think more than anything, when people come see the show, they're like, okay, what's the Michael come through? Like, what's this right, guy's vibe? Right. What's, what's going to be on? And I think it's interesting. I, I can tell from the applause I get when I first come out what the, the crowd's going to be and what I should give and all that. So I think by the end of that number, they are like, okay, cool, we're in safe hands, this kid is good, what's the show about? And, and I love seeing the little faces just light up and it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a... You set the stage. Yeah, Beat it, set, set, the stage. set the tone, all that. And so it's for me, it's, it's, it's a highlight, I think, of the show. Friends, they come here to see you, what do they say? I mean, they love it. It's, I mean, that's one thing, it's like awesome to like, be a lead in the role, be Michael Jackson playing, like it's all, it's insane. It's an amazing show, like I'm a little biased, but it's, it's great. It's like really, truly a fantastic show to go see. I think anyone who is a, fan of Broadway, fan of theater, not a fan, just a fan of Michael. Right. Anybody who just comes to see, they really like enjoy themselves. The search for the Holy Grail continues on Broadway this fall. It's the revival of Spamalot, the 2005 Tony winner for Best Musical, based loosely on Monty Python and the Holy Grail. We got to know the star-studded cast. I'm a Monty Python, Died in the Wool fan. And having done SNL, it's so funny because I know that Lorne wanted to capture that Monty Python thing when he was sort of launching SNL. Like, it was truly a direct source of inspiration. It feels like this weird, full circle kind of connection of all of my loves and passions. Comedy at the highest level, musical theater on Broadway at the highest level. Like, it's the only thing that's disappointing about being in the show is not being able to watch it. I mean, my kids are actually two people I think about because I think we've watched the movie, but, you know, they're going to just experience this all those iconic moments, but also it's with the music. The, the, the music so elevates what is a, a, a silly, crazy movie, but this music gives it such heart and it, and it gives it such like lift. When my kids saw it in DC, they had never seen it before, and now they're big fans. They saw the show, ran home, got the movie, lost their minds, and so we're hoping that when people come and see the show, they'll realize it's just a place for you to throw away your troubles and just laugh with us. You know, it's 2023. We want to bring Spamalot to, to today. We know people are going to be coming without, you know, decades of ideas about what it is, and yet we also want to honor the Spamalot fans. You know, the Spamalot fans and the Python fans, because they know, I mean, <laughs> Certain characters come out on stage and they applaud before anything has even happened because they know, I know that's Tim the Enchanter or I know that's Brother Maynard. It's very, it's very fun. You know, there's a lot of Broadway shows, right? Why come see Spamalot? You come see Spamalot to have a good time because we're having a good time. Yeah. So if we're having a good time, you're going to have a good time. It's for everyone, which is great because a lot of shows are not for everybody. And I really think you don't have to be a fan of Monty Python or like know the movie and you can just come and have a great time. What, what do we say? The comedy clown car? Oh yeah, it's 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 a clown car. We just pull, clown we're just pulling a clown car up to the St. Yep, James. That's it. Beep beep. Oh, that's here it. we are. Doo, bam, doo, doo. Bam, bam, bam. Beep, beep, bam, bam, bam. Bam. Welcome to the Milan Rouge. Riverdale favorite Casey Cott is Broadway's newest Christian. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. Self-proclaimed theater nerd Casey Cott is making his Broadway debut as leading man Christian in Moulin Rouge the Musical. We sat down at Citizen M Hotel. <laughs> Casey, how you doing? Good, good to see you. You're on Broadway. Yeah. It happened. It happened. I always thought my path would be straight into the theater realm. You know, I was doing Riverdale for seven years. Yeah, you got a TV show, big got TV, a TV show. Head. And out of, you know, college, just crazy. Um, so, you know, now that that's done, being able to come here has been a dream come true. This is one of my favorite shows ever. It was also one of my favorite movies. Uh, yeah. This is the show I tell everyone. They're like, what should I see on Broadway? And I'm like, 
Have you seen Moulin Rouge? Yeah. What a good time. Yeah. When did you first get to experience it as an audience member? I, well, I, as a theater nerd, listened to the soundtrack, and obviously anytime, you know, today in that cruise on an album, anyone's listening to it. Um, but I didn't get to see it because I was in Canada filming. I got to see it uh, when I was in rehearsals quite a few times with Derek and Jojo, who were amazing. So that was my first time. So the first time I saw it, I knew I was gonna be in it. And I think it was just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I was thinking about it. It's such a great character for like a young actor to play because he's so like open. And right. so like, there's like he's just such a beautiful, one of a kind kind of soul. There's not much of a filter there. And it's beautiful because the character without a filter is actually full of love and, and kindness and joy and not, you know, skepticism and um, anger and a lot of things that are in the world as well. So getting to play that every night, you know, even if you're having a tough day and you get to go paint this picture of what the world could look like and it's, it's really fun through 70 pop songs. One of the coolest things about the show is the audience reaction. They're just, there's just something for everyone in the show because it yeah. is such a spectacle. You know, the cast is, is really incredible. Getting to, do, getting to do it with Courtney has been a dream. She's... Um, Courtney Reed. Courtney Reed is yes. such an incredible so actress. She, I first knew her from Aladdin on Broadway, right. but she did the national tour. She did the tour. So she's been satining all over she's the country. She's been satining all over the world. Uh, she's, <laughs> she's such a generous scene partner. Also, having that experience of doing the show, along with actually there's quite a few people on the tour and still original cast members that are still on the show. Um, their experience has helped someone who's super green doing their Broadway debut, like me, um, just kind of lift me up and in a very Aladdin way, take me on their magic carpet ride, which has been great because I always watched people on Broadway and thought, you know, they have it all figured out. They're incredible. Like, how do they? And now that I'm there, I'm like, I have nothing figured out. But all these people keep encouraging me to keep <laughs> learning and every day it gets better or easier or worse or you just keep figuring out all these different things and if you're uh, in, the, in the right group of friends and coworkers, they can really teach you how to do that. And Derek and Aaron have been really great with that too. Whatever I've needed, they, they're like there. It's, so the, there's a Christian club? There's a Christian club, yeah. Is there a, tech, a group text? Not yet, okay. we're, we're getting there. We're starting <laughs> off soft. We're making sure that we're all okay with each other, but, um, <laughs> but they're both, you know, I, I've looked up to those guys a lot. So as someone who is admittedly super green, stepping into this, have, have there been anything, any surprises or anything about the experience that maybe you didn't oh, expect? I think everything is completely, um, it, it's like 10 times everything I expected. Really? Uh, yeah, but at the, at the baseline, you're doing a play, just like you did in high school, just like you did in college or whatever. But everything on top of it is just so, so cool. But yeah, every night I put in my AirPods and walk home down uh, 8th Ave and I'm like, that's crazy. For an extended cut of this interview and others, head over to Broadway.com. This is The Broadway Show and we're back in just a few. I'm Daniel Radcliffe and you're watching The Broadway Show. Yeah. Thanks for sticking around. I'm Tamson Fidel. Nearly 50 years since opening on Broadway, the revival of The Wiz is now on the yellow brick road back to the Great Bright Way. The pre-Broadway tour now underway through next spring. It does feel like this yellow brick road has a very magical destination and I'm, I'm so excited. Never once did I ever imagine that I would be helming the one that would be coming in. You know, it was just so beyond my imagination. Even when I got the call, I was like, Oh, and it wasn't even like, oh, they're gonna talk to you about this. It's like, hey, they wanna have a conversation with you. And they said the whiz, and I went, this is a very big call. All right, let's 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 break into this. Next stop on the tour, Washington, D.C. Then it's on to Pittsburgh. Welcome to Zsa Zsa's African Hair Braiding. Here's Beth Stevens with another edition of Building Broadway. Thanks, Tamsin. Jocelyn Bio's new show, Zsa Zsa's African Hair Braiding, takes audiences into a busy Harlem shop. I went backstage at the Samuel J. Friedman Theater to talk to hair and wig designer, Nakia Mathis. Nakia, what does it mean for you to have this celebration of black hair on Broadway? Oh my God, well, first of all, that's a loaded question. It is. Because, you know, I feel like I've exper experienced black hair or natural textured hair not be um, appreciated or supported or undermined, you know, in certain ways. So like to have a show that is specifically focused on our hair, it just really, it means a lot. It's really symbolic. Yeah, I feel like we're, we're changing the tide a bit with this show. 
How many wigs are in this show? Oh my gosh, um, one, two, three, four, five. Like there are like almost 20 wigs in this show. And yet they are in different states of creation yep. because in the braiding shop, they're not done yet. Exactly. The show takes place over the course of an entire day, right? So they're in there in the morning and they leave at night, like around or after 9 p.m. So ultimately there are styles that are an all day process. So how do we show the progression of hair throughout what would be really a eight, nine, 10 hour process in 90 minutes. So that's where the magic of the wigs and the wig making and even like the direction like come into play. When you walk in to see this show, you see sort of maybe a menu of what someone uh -huh. might come in and, and, and choose. Absolutely. You walk in and the first thing you see is is what would be a hair book, which is what you see when you go into the braiding salon. They have a book of all of the styles that you'll see. So you'll see that when you first come in. But, and I think that was important to me because black women will change their hair. One day it'll be a here, one day it'll be Beyonce braids down <laughs> to the floor. And it's like, how did you change that? What is, but that ultimately is really a part of our, our culture. So I would say that it was important for me to show a range of styles. But the other thing is that the beauty of this play is that Jocelyn has written this as a hair story. So she wrote, this person comes in, asks for box braids. She she says, I want a certain length of hair. So it was already mapped out for me in some ways. There are a couple styles that are not determined by the playwright. And I think that's where our Afro pop wig came in. I was, I was like, listen, we really are, black women right now are really doing like Afro futuristic styling. So styling that have has the history of Africa, but then like feel like, you know, you could be on another planet rocking this hairstyle. So like, I really wanted to show something like that, just to show a range of what black women do. <laughs>
You, but I, I've seen stage, you say in yeah. multiple interviews, you kind of say like, I'm really a theater actress. Well, you know, I came out of Baltimore at 17 years old, got into NYU, started as a journalism major just because it was so, I've always wanted to be an actress, yeah. but I was like, well, I don't want my dad to pay for that tuition and not have a real job. Right. But second semester freshman year, I called him and I was like, dad, I, I auditioned for Tish and I got in and can I switch? And he was like, you know you're entering the business of no, right? And he goes, and you can't give up. You can't give up. You have to have your yes on the inside. And that's what I've done for mm, 40 years. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.